But for us, it was important to see uh, this uh, cast is not very good, but we can see that everything is still in place. Mm -hmm. No damages. Here we can see more or less everything is in place, only some damages here. At the mm -hmm. time, let's say 1880. Yes, sir. 1880. 140 years ago. Yes, sir. More or less, 150 years ago. Yeah, well-preserved pediment. Mm. And this is well. On first level, on second level tower. And if we look to the photos we did, in, already in 1999, this is on the first tower, level tower, mm. well preserved. And on the second level tower, big parts are lost. But sir, we, we don't know where they, they, they went, right? They just fell down. And then yeah. they become, you it's know, mainly, just like... It's uh, mainly uh, sanding, uh, uh, mm. scaling, which is causing the damage, what I explained, the detachment. And then it falls down and uh, if nobody cares, of course, at that time there was no maintenance. There were no people looking after something, yeah. Mm. So, so they fall down very, very slowly every day and it is very hard to... No, no, yeah. it can be that such a huge piece falls mm. down in one. Yeah, like the one I showed to you, yeah. Yes, sir. No. Where was it? It was at the beginning. This part for sure mm. came off in once. Blop. Yeah. So not only small pieces. Now it's what we call uh, flaking and sanding. And yeah. then now small pieces fall. Fall, mm. fall continuously. Yeah. If we don't do a conservation. But here for sure it's also big pieces in once who come off. Yeah. And but but the next information we need is how is the condition really there? Yeah. Now we only have the pictures and we can see a lot of uh, missing parts. Here we can see totally complete. But mm. if we do a, what we de then do is the next step a mapping of what we call damages. Yeah. We can even see here the red one is scaling. So these eras are highly endangered also to fall off. You understand? Yeah, yes, sir. And here we can see all was yellow, was missing already. There it's flaking. Yeah, this is what I showed in the last picture. But also the other pieces which are still in place are totally detached and highly endangered to fall off. Mm. So both here with there, we decided it's really urgent to do an intervention. So we put scaffolding here, but also here. Yeah. Of course, here it would be really, really, really sad if we would have lo lost some of the complete relief. So even on the same pediment, yeah. the restoration is very different also because there are different parts that fall down yeah, yeah. different yeah, yeah. places. So yeah, yeah. specific treatment will be put on specific on area. Specific era, yeah. Up to the up to the millimeter, let's say. Up to the millimeter. It's mm. you know the work the team is doing, it's with tiny little instruments, small spatulas, mm. syringes and things like that for this huge temple. Yeah. No big tools, no big chisels, no big yeah. So this is a bit like Sisyphos, yeah, but nevertheless very successful as you can see here. But what I, again, what I wanted to show, only the picture does not give reliable information. Mm -hmm. You have to go and do check and investigate and do mapping, then you can see that even on a complete relief parts are highly endangered. And you cannot bring this to the lab. You have to bring the lab to... <laughs> you have to, to the, bring the lab to... to, to the the, yeah, some work mm. we are doing in the lab, but a lot of work on research and investigations we also have to do at the site, yeah? Mm. And yes. mainly non-invasive, uh, yeah? Mm. Non-invasive. So for this, the conservation is finished and now it's stable, but... Next time, when we get the permission, I'm going around with a drone, mm. taking pictures, look about the condition and uh, uh, do a monitoring. 
Yes, sir. So if we are not careful, everything can fall off. Maybe Man, in many areas, things can fall off. Yeah. This problem we don't have in the temples in the forest. We don't have it all. Yeah. They are all the, the more or less the walls are very very stable and the decoration on the walls. Yes, sir. So I want to ask that question also. So let's say the body leaf in Kulen Mountain, you know, where the the let's say the lichen or the plants, they cover, you know, the, the body leaf very, very, yeah. you know, thickly. And also like the lingam that is under the water, they don't show a lot of deterioration. Is that correct, sir? This is correct. Mm. But first of all, some of the stone materials are different from this mm. one. Mm. Uh, and specific, uh, the, the uh, bas reliefs uh, on the bedrock. Yes, sir. This is a very, very special case. Rock art preserva conservation preservation is very, very, very sensitive. We have a lot in Coquer at, Ra at the Rahal. Yeah. Uh, this is a very, very specific task. But due to the, uh, con that we have a more or less constant condition, no changing conditions. Mm. Yeah. Water is always, it's always the same humidity. So they are, more or less protected. Of but course, the, the running water does not, let's say, chip not away so the stone, not, no, not so much. No, 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 oh. no, no, okay. no, no. It can cause damaging when uh, a big flood is coming mm. and this big flood is uh, bring bringing and sands and mm. boulders and yeah, the, the sand and the boulders of the gravel can, can damage but somehow. In normal yeah. condition, but you are, cannot yeah. in normal condition now and you don't have a chance to yeah. Uh, protect it, yeah, yeah. Yes. In the in the couple spin, how to protect the the bas reliefs, the lingas in the water? It's very hard to do. Then you need to put no. a dam or something to stop the water, but it's not. But then it's uh, not yeah. the the uh, you know you have to keep the spiritual mm. uh, uh, the religious aspect of this whole thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you remove the water, it's not sometimes in dry season it happens, yeah. Mm. But this is natural. But yeah. if you do it artificially, then you destroy the intention of these bas reliefs in the water. Yeah. Mm. Yes, sir. I only wanted now, as we hear at the level of the of the apsaras, some picture of the condition before. So this is this corner here, mm. and you can see all detached. Yeah, it's extremely fragile. Yeah, the water washed out. Yeah, already, and a lot of cracks and flaking, sanding. Here we can also see the whitish are damaging salts. Yeah, here the same, but from front. Yeah totally uh, separated the whole relief by frac uh, 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 cracks mm. and joints. So it's extremely, look at this here. Yeah. You understand? This is the body of the Apsara around the corner. Very fragile fla scale. And then on top, the scale is all thin scale already missing. It's flaking, sanding. So if you don't do it, it will not survive. Uh, at least uh, the next one or two years. Yes, sir. But do you think the apsara on the upper part, uh, you know, receive uh, the damage differently from the apsara on the lower part? Because um, people on the lower part can touch them, but at the upper part, people cannot touch the apsara. So do you see the, the difference in... in Actually, day -day? this is not due to the people. Oh, yeah. not due to the people. Of course, the people should not touch. Yeah, yeah sure. because if everybody is touching, you get all the the, the materials uh, from mm. the skin, the salt, the sweating, the uh, the uh, mosquito repellent, and the sun cream. Everything will be on the apsaras. Mm. Uh, the apsaras don't need sun cream; <laughs> they are protected yes, without sun cream. Uh, but uh, no, it's dependent on the situation. It's dependent specific here in this case. On this level, the, the upside on the outside, yeah, on all four corner towers mm. are in the worst condition 
uh, of all. And this, we think, is due to the fact that what I said upstairs, that the corner towers on the second level were not finished. Mm. But nevertheless, a lot of beds inside, a lot of bed deposits inside. We know from Central Tower that uh, there were several meters of bed deposits when the French mm. came. Uh, and for sure here as well, yeah. And then we had a lot of rain coming in due to the oh. fact that it was not closed. So we think this is mainly, of course, this uh, uh, mechanism of scale formation, yeah. Uh, this starts immediately when it's uh, built and exposed to the weather. Mm. But here it's specific, the effect from the, uh, from the bed from the damaging waste. salt. The waste of the bed from the uh, salts yeah, out yeah. of the waste of the beds. Yeah. Mm. This we have in uh, all four levels. And uh, Mr. Sal Post told me we have concluded the work on the North West Tower in 2018. And now already some maintenance has to be done on the bus reliefs outside again. Yeah. Mm. And here again, this is now the third time we have been working on these Apsaras since 2000. Three times already. Why? So because it, keep, it keeps uh, breaking down? It or? keeps going, uh, the damages, and of course, the high content damaging salts we cannot remove. Oh. It's impossible to remove the salts. We I did some, uh, at the beginning, some tests on the northwest tower, uh, northeast tower. In some places we have 20 weight percent of salts in the stone. So mm. 20 percent of the stone in the pores is salt. Mm. And it's through the whole 1.5 meters thick wall. So when we remove some salt outside, salts will continue. They will move, they will move. This is also the philosophy behind uh, restoration, conservation, heritage protection. We can never stop decay. the deter decay. Yeah. Impossible. We see it on the big mountains. Yeah, the Himalaya at one point will be smaller, smaller, smaller again. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Alps were much higher, and they are now smaller. We have mountains in uh, in Germany uh, in uh, 400 million. Years ago, there were maybe more than 1,000 meters. Now they are 500 meters high mm. only. Yeah? So this is natural. This is weathering. And also our auto artificial mountains, yes, sir. they are con constantly decaying. And our work is to reduce the speed, to mm. reduce the dynamics of the decay. Yes, sir. So can you give us like a small description on how you particularly uh, restore this, uh, let's say, group of Apsaras? Sir? Actually, like, in this case, Mr. Yeah. Suppose would be the better. better, <laughs> better. <laughs> okay. yeah, actually, the first yeah. thing is we do uh, a mapping, a deterioration mm -hmm. mapping, what I showed to you before on the pediments. Yeah? Like a pre preliminary study, something like that? Sir. No, this yeah. is the documentation, documentation of the state of preservation. The, the documentation of the condition at the time we starting the program project. And this is the base for the further uh, maintenance uh, or monitoring and maintenance. Yes, sir. If we don't know at a certain point how was the condition, later we cannot say, oh, this became worse or better. Mm. Yeah? So we need something which we can compare. Like a timeline, sir. Like a timeline, yeah. Then uh, the team is doing some tests. Then, if necessary, the team is doing very carefully cleaning, mainly with toothbrushes or small, small mm. brushes, uh, as far, far as possible dry, but in many cases it's only possible doing it with wet. Then they put on highly endangered areas with high salt content. Mm. Very often we take samples do an analysis in the lab in Cologne on the content of salts and then, for example, like at Preaco on the door frames. And then uh, we know about the comp composition of the salts and then we know how to remove at least 
part in the surface near zone of the, of the, uh, the bus relief, how to remove with poultice. Poultice means we mix uh, uh, very specific clay earth and, and cellulose fibers in a specific ratio with water and apply it for a certain time. And then we can do a test on, on the poultice when we remove it, if it's also some salts in the poultice. Yeah. Yes, we can do tests on the sandstone if we were able to remove some. And then the team starts with fixing very, uh, the bigger scales with pins. I cannot see. Like a physical pin, sir. Like a physical pin, like mm. with fiberglass towels. You can see it where, where we have the small spots. Oh. Yeah. There this, uh, the scale was fixed. Uh, as I said, uh, the philosophy is the mortars we use uh, are adapted to the sandstone, mm. but from the strength they should weaker, be weaker than the sandstone itself, a little bit weaker. In case the damage or the decay continues, first the mortar should decay and then the sandstone. Mm. If we use cement, the sandstone decays, but the, the cement, cement remains. stays, remains. Yeah. So this is the wrong way. And that's why we have to fix heavy big scales with mechanical pins. Mm. So then the next step is to do the pointing all around the damaged area, close all cracks, close the joints. Yeah. The aim is that no water is penetrating or most of the water is running off. Nevertheless, when it's raining, the stone is soaking. But if we have open areas, especially uh, areas where the, the scale is open, then the water can run in, uh, behind and then additionally uh, yes, water uh, penetrates and uh, affects the, the stone. So this is the next step. When this is finished in the the pointings around the scales, they insert small plastic tubes. Mm. <coughs> and through these tubes, later, again, a liquid uh, uh, mortar, liquid mortar, mm. uh, based on ethyl silicate again, is injected with syringes to the back mm. to yes. fill the era, the detached era, the, the crumbling era behind the scale. So if I can, I can see like a small drill hole here, maybe so? This is no. fixed. This oh, is for okay. fixing. Uh, actually, ah, oh, sorry, <laughs> I get, have to get up. It's easier to show here. Yes, sir. For example, this is a scale. Oh. If you knock, when it's untreated, it sounds hollow. Oh, okay. Yeah? So here they did the whole pointing. They had the small tubes inside mm. and they injected a lot of liquid mortar behind this scale. The so same you, here. You it was. Use, you used your knuckle to, to For example, the stone, yeah. We have example. another yeah. tool as well, a technique, more mm. technical tool, but also the, we can do it with the. <laughs> your own hand, yeah. With the fingers, yeah. Mm. And before, really, this whole era was sounded very hollow. Mm. And now it's injected, and inside the scale, the ethyl silicate motor reacts and fills the gap uh, and uh, consolidates as well the crumbling era behind. So some conservation work are deep inside the stone, so that some people cannot see it. It's not visible. It's not it's visible. Not visible. And uh, then finally, for example, here on this era, this specific liquid wash is applied and pushed in and then removed mm. uh, at a certain level. But for example, this one, the Apsara here is almost completely gone. There were two Apsara. Mm. Yeah. You can see one hairdress, mm. one face, and in the corner, a second one. Mm. Because this is the foot of the right Apsara. Oh, okay. And this is the arm of the left Apsara. 
So but, this is how we can see how many apsaras. But yeah. we, we never know, we, we will never know their face because it's gone. Gone. Maybe gone. since long time, yeah. Uh, it was already gone in 1995. We have the documentation of the apsaras from 1995, so we can see this was already gone, yeah. Or here on this side as well, yeah. Also, most probably two. Hmm? No, only one. Here, mm -hmm. only one. Yeah. Yes, so this is more or less the process. And of course, uh, it's different from the restoration. You see something is dismantled and then rebuilt and new pieces added and then it's complete and everybody can see. Yeah. For conservators, it's more important that nobody can see what has been done. Mm. Nevertheless, everything is sta stable after the intervention. Uh, and yes, sir, you know, because like you said, the conservation work will not 100%, you know, protect everything on the wall. So maybe just a prediction for the future, sir. If everything will one day fall down, how do we preserve this image, sir, so that, let's say, generations to come will, will be able to see? Maybe, like you said, um, a plaster replica or maybe a 3D model or something. What is the prediction of the scientist, let's say, <laughs> sir? <laughs> it's difficult yeah. to say. Actually, this is now uh, the, the actual state is for 100% preserved. Mm. But as the uh, weathering process will continue, of course, the main uh, yeah, the main task for conservators is to regularly monitor, maintain, and when small damages occur again, do a minor intervention. Mm. This is how we try to uh, yeah, make the life longer for, for the decoration. On the other hand, of course, we cannot keep it for forever. forever. No. No. Uh, of course, we do a documentation, so it's visible, or this hopefully the archive will uh, survive longer than the monument itself, yes, which sir. is crucial. We can do 3D modeling, of mm. course, yeah. Photograph? Uh, uh, photograph one, in yeah. general, of course, but also 3D monitoring or uh, modeling, yeah. Nowadays, you have easy possibility, you can do 3D uh, model with the iPhone already. Yeah, in former time, it wa was much more difficult. Uh, we, for example, in the bus relief gallery here, this is for monitoring mainly, mainly we do 3D laser scanning. Yeah, mm. so we have models of the galleries inside and showing also naturally, the, of course, the, 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 the bus reliefs and the quality of the bus reliefs, etc. Uh, but on the other hand, it's always the question if the digital uh, uh, archive. documents, <laughs> archives survive for a long time. Mm, maybe, yeah? they, maybe they won't survive as long as the stone, we cannot see. I, I'm convinced yeah, yeah. the temple and the stone and the apsaras and the pediments in the state of preservation now will last much longer than our documentation, mm. uh, digital documentation. We know from the beginning we did a full survey of all apsaras and full photographic survey, but after some years we nearly couldn't read the CDs. At that time mm. we were told CDs, they are forever. No, they are not forever. Yes. The yeah. magnetic uh, property will, will deviate will over time. Will deviate yeah. over time. So what is the digital system which is surviving longer mm. than the temple itself? Yeah. Uh, of course we have uh, for example, in the museums in Europe, yeah, uh, Paris, we have the copies of the bus reliefs. Mm. Yeah, and also I know from Berlin yes, in the museum, there are parts of the yeah. copies of the bus reliefs. So these are more substantial and as long as the, the museums survive, the, also these mm. will kept, yeah, and give an example. But for the whole temple here and for all the bus reliefs and all the decoration, I think it's also nearly impossible to make, yes. uh, first of all, uh, copies, casts, yes. uh, cast copies or 3D modeling. Yeah, In the bus reliefs uh, we did in the Suryavaman gallery, but a uh, uh, Japanese colleague did a lot mm. uh, also 3D modeling in other, but they are all in a digital format. Yeah. 
And for this, we need uh, the maintenance. We need to update them and update from them, one copy to, the to one. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the 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 Americans landed once on the moon. Yeah. Yep. Yes, sir. But the data from that time is not readable anymore. So also cannot be reconstructed to to be used maybe for the next approach. Yeah. But yes. now, of course, we have different uh, the uh, uh, different met methods, etc., which are more advanced than it like was in, at in that the, time. In yeah. the 1990s, uh, we were using VHS, but now there is no VHS player. No VHS player no VHS anymore, player. and soon yeah. also the CD will disappear. And yeah, yeah, yeah. the small uh, music, Hard drive, yeah, yeah. Uh, drives, iPod, et cetera, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Go on. So this is for sure one of the biggest. Uh, question B in, in Germany, different groups are discussing how can we uh, yeah, take care of our documentations, yeah? especially the di digital documentations. Actually, we have a good example in Cologne. Yes, sir. Cologne Cathedral was built in 12th century, started now in 13th century, started in and uh, for the huge towers, 158 meters high, mm. there was a plan made by these people at that time, drawing on, on uh, not on paper, but on, on uh, uh, cow skin, yeah, and it's uh, on parchment, yeah, and it's still in the cathedral hanging. Cow skin? Wow. On the parchment. Oh, parchment. Parchment, yes, yeah. Mm. This analog document is still alive now, uh, nearly uh, 1,000 years old, yeah? Wow. And uh, you might know Cologne Cathedral was never finished in Middle Age. There was a break of several hundred years. Mm. And in 19th century, they started to conclude the work on the cathedral. Mm. So one of the towers was, didn't exist in 1500. When they restarted the work in 19th century, 1948, uh, 1848, they restarted. They had this plan mm. from the Middle Age and they could construct the tower as it was planned in uh, 500 years ago. So the analog document survived. I'm not convinced that our digital <laughs> documents will, mm. will survive so, such a long time. So yeah. we need to be careful about the approach we that we... To, yeah. But we yeah. have to take care about our documentations, yeah, mm. of course. In mm. our project still, all the uh, documents, the mappings especially, uh, are not only on CD, mm. but all, uh, also pictures from the Apsaras, but are also printed on paper. Mm. Of course, this is also not really sustainable over hundreds of yeah. years, but better than a digital format only, yeah, which can, we mm. discussed already, collapse very soon. And it, it also depends on the readability of the document. You know, for um, example, in the next 400 years, let's say, people might not read what we wrote today. The grammar this has changed. This is another question, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah but, but for this you need yeah. Uh, scientists, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The scientists who now are reading the inscriptions in Angkor, yeah. Mm. Uh, there's also different writing and understanding and meaning. But they can uh, decipher, uh, yeah. They have to, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, study, yeah. do research on it and come to a certain conclusion, yeah. I see. Yeah, this is right, yeah, yeah. But picture maybe also in 500 years, people will understand yeah. still, yeah? And they can go with yeah. the picture. This is here, uh -huh. this was the condition, like we do the, with the cast from De La Porte mm. from 150 years ago. Yes, sir. Or maybe uh, the last question for the interview today, sir. You said, you know, the knowledge have to, to be transferred from, you know, the, uh, you know, let's say international expert to the local expert, you know, as they need to maintain their own ancestral legacy. So, so over the past uh, 30 years, um, because I heard from Mr. Longnari that you also have like training for the, the student, you know, where they train for like uh, one or two years uh, on restoration, I think. So how, how has that, you know, been contributing to the, to the local experts? Uh? Yeah, actually, this is for sure that at one point, yes. the local people 
have to take care by themselves. Yeah, mm. uh, foreigners can come for a certain time and then they disappear. And a uh, project is only successful when uh, it was able to train people, Cambodian people, mm. Cambodian conservators, and hand over the responsibility also to the Cambodian team. Uh, you mentioned Long Nari, he was one of our first trainees mm. yeah, before we handed over to, to Apsara and uh, Mr. Hosavin was the second one, Mr. Uh, Peck was the third one, but he passed away unfortunately already. Mm. Yeah? And we started with training from the beginning yeah? and engaged step by step more and more Cambodian people. And uh, of course, some receive a more detailed training, like the site managers. Yeah, they have to manage everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have to understand the whole problem of deterioration, the process of conservation, the research techniques, and have to manage it. While the the other team uh, have to do the work at the site mainly. Yeah, but also one specialist constructing these scaffoldings. Mm -hmm. yeah? He is the man who is organizing and the team then built the, the scaffolding. So at one point, of course, the team has to be responsible for the conservation of the temple. I'm old, mm -hmm. I cannot come forever, of course. Yeah? Yes, sir. And uh, we are convinced as long as the team is very well uh, embedded in the national authority, Apsara, mm -hmm. they will able, be able to do the work constantly, what they learned. Not only the conservation, but also the, what for me is one of the main part of the heritage preservation is monitoring and maintenance. Yeah? In German, we have a different word. Uh, it's not, uh, doesn't say archaeology like here. It says heritage maintenance. Mm. This is a program that you have to maintain, 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 maintain. Yeah, you understand. And I'm convinced they are able, and we saw it already during the pandemic. Of course, they were more or less self-dependent here. Of course, we had some uh, interaction, uh, some uh, uh, yeah, uh, connection through internet, the email, etc. But the main thing they were doing by themselves, planning, etc. It was the Northwest Tower, uh, Northeast Tower, yeah? And I was really astonished. For the first tower, the TV needed four years. And during the pandemic, they were working so good and constantly, it was already finished after two years, yeah? Mm. So, of course, this is uh, necessary and that uh, the team is well integrated in the national authority and that it's also uh, acknowledged by the authority that they have this very specific uh, work to do and the pr this very specific approach. Mm, yeah, so they learned. Yeah, and so very I'm convinced trade, if yeah. I go tomorrow, they will be able to do it. Yeah. Mm. Main thing beside this is, of course, that uh, they need materials. This meets the project always needs money. Up to now, most of the money comes from Germany, yeah, uh, from the German government. Uh, as we have a, a cult uh, called Cultural Preservation Program, which uh, is sponsoring the project since mm -hmm. 1997. But uh, the crucial thing is that some of the materials are not available in Cambodia, not on the local and regional markets. Yes, sir. You have to purchase them in Europe, especially in Germany. Uh, what I said, the ethyl silicate. Mm. And this has to be established through the authority that always the material is in stock. It's really urgent that the team can react immediately. If there's an urgency, they must react each uh, urgently. For this, they need the materials. Uh, they cannot say, oh, I make a proposal and maybe in two years I get the money and then I and can... The, uh, the yeah. Apsara has already fallen down. Apsara <laughs> said, Lihai, Lihai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you understand, yeah. So, but I'm convinced we are in a very good way. Yeah, we have a very close cooperation with the directors of the DCMA. 
uh, in Apsara and uh, most probably, I don't know if we will meet now again or still this week uh, for discussions. So uh, I think the team is well received and uh, they are able to continue with the work. Yes, sir. But for now, you still continue on the, on the let's say, conservation of uh, this work. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, of course, yeah, yeah, continuously, continuously. Actually, we have been now in the whole time working on around 25 temples, mm. yeah. We are teaching at uh, Cocair as well, training oh. uh, Cocair staff. Uh, we give advices in Cocair and uh, and in in Brea we mm. So, and I also don't see only Angkor or separate, this is this is something different now it's your common heritage yeah yes, sir. all together all temples yeah and for this of course uh, there's a good exchange also of our team with the uh, staff in the conservators in in uh, Coquer, yeah so this is what i think and of course we also need the exchange mm -hmm. with the international teams here yes sir